Hi, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are. For a global climate model or an Earth system model, we could perform generic model assessment irrespective of application, or we could have application-specific and process-based model evaluation. For example, if a GCM cannot reproduce a certain regional phenomena of interest, does it make sense to include it in our ENSOP? In this presentation, I will show the importance of pre-screening to identify and rank model based on application-specific metric. I will show this using a red tide example. Uh, what is red tide? So these are harmful algae bloom in Florida. Uh, for example, they occur due to Crania previs. That's a single cell marine organism. It produces a potent neurotoxin that cause several stomach and neurological problem, and it affects the economy of Florida badly. Would you like to spend a vacation in a place that looks like this? It looks bad, it smells bad, and the previous toxin can cause respiratory illness, and you will end up in the emergency department. You could get food poisoning from shellfish. You also end up in like the emergency department. Uh, so we thought of like using an earth system model to project red tide in the future, which is a task that has been done by only very few study and very limited. Uh, we thought like an earth system model, it has, red tide has several global teleconnection like African Saharan dust, like the Gulf Stream, which is connected to regional phenomena that's like loop current. Uh, how can we use an earth system model that, so to do this, so an Earth system model, it can function as an ecosystem-based model. This is not possible with the current generation of Earth system model because a lot of processes and coupling are missing. For example, nutrient transport from land to ocean. Uh, but we can use the outputs of an Earth system model as an input to like a mechanistic model, like, like a Lagrangian or an individual-based model. These are the few studies have done this. Or like a with a phenomenological model, like you can use this outputs of an Earth system model to create a machine learning model, for example. The high resolution model of CMIP6 are particularly very useful for that because they can reproduce regional phenomena that were not possible before with a standard resolution Earth system model, like loop current. So. What is loop current? So loop current is part of the Gulf Stream. It's a warm ocean current that circulates in the Gulf of Mexico. So I'm showing this here. So that's the loop current in the south position in March. Then in June, it starts to go inside the Gulf of Mexico. That's the Gulf of Mexico. And the high resolution air system model, which, is an eddy per, which has an eddy permitting grid, that can resolve mesoscale eddy and boundary current, it can reproduce the loop current in the north position versus uh, standard resolution earth system model with eddy closure grid. It cannot uh, reproduce a spatial phenomenon of interest, that's like loop current. Uh, and simulating loop current is very important for red tide. It's a primary driver of red tide, as I will show you. So, here, uh, this is loop current in the south position, and the, so this is shown by like these arrows here, and this is loop current in the north position. This is shown by this like positive bars here. Uh, when loop current is in the south position, you see it's all green, no plume occurred. When loop current is in the north position, that's like the necessary condition for like red tide to occur. So it could be like green or red. Uh, so that's from like reanalysis data. Can we and the loop current south ratio is about 2.7 percent, like one fourth, about one fourth. Uh, can we reproduce this with an ensemble of the Earth system model? Uh, if carefully chosen, yes. So here, this is like an ensemble of high resolution model, and you can get this ratio like uh, very close. Uh, but to do, get this in SOP, we need some, it is application specific based on some pre-screening as I will show you. 
So here, this is like the reanalysis data. Here is the loop current north. This is loop current south. So our first step is that like this model, these are the raw resolution model, which we know from prior information that cannot reproduce loop current in the north. So you see here it's all loop current in the south. It cannot produce any of the rest. So that gets a score of zero. Uh, this one, that's a high resolution model. It can reproduce loop current in the north position, but it cannot reproduce it according to this empirical relationship we have. So here's this empirical relationship is that we get the difference of C surface height of these two segments. If it's a positive number, that would be loop current north. If it's a negative number, that would be loop current south. So that one can reproduce this, but cannot get this empirical relation. So it gets a score of one. This one, it can reproduce both, but it shows that the ratio of loop current in the south position is higher than the north, which is not consistent with our observation. So that gets a score of two. And here it can do correctly, like you get like high, the ratio here is lower than here as we expected. So based on this pre-screening, we can do two things. We can do like either like subset selection, we just remove and select certain models. And here, for example, I'm showing uh, the inclusion of all the model irrespective. So here, these are like low resolution model, high resolution model, everything. And that one will get like very bad. We cannot reproduce like the ratios that we are interested in. Uh, here, if we remove like low resolution models, so based like using the prior, this prior information that we have from literature, it improve. If we start to do pre-screening and we only include representative model models that can reproduce like loop current north and loop current south, then you get like a, you know like a good matching. And here, you become like aggressive and you only include models that uh, are like has uh, skillful model that we get this ratio correct. Versus if we did model, we can also do model weighting, but if we did model weighting, you see, you are forcing the ensemble to reproduce the data. So even if you didn't remove the bad model, you still get like a good match. And allow me to show you why this happened. So here, for example, we see that like uh, model number uh, three, which has like a score of one and the model number uh, four, which has like a score of zero, they have a higher weight than model number seven, which has a score of three. And that is like due to error cancellation where these like non-representative model could out, uh, uh, could, uh, underplay robust model. So pre-screening is useful for developing application specific ensemble giving a regional phenomena. Pre-screening is important as non-representative model can underplay robust model. And uh, pre-screening provide insight about the validity of model weight and can be useful for subset selection. So you can find more publication uh, here in this link. We are also doing uh, editing a book about uh, machine learning uh, application in zero time. So if you are interested in contributing a chapter, please contact us. Thank you and uh, ready for questions.